I wanted to look at uh, some of the options available for trying to create a test environment for your live Active Directory. There is a certain method that um, you know people have a lot of success with, and that's creating a domain controller, synchronizing it up, and then completely isolating it from the network. Um, and once it's isolated, you can seize the FSMO roles or the FISMO roles and actually create a true replica of your live Active Directory. So, so let's have a look at that process and we'll see what's involved. So this is my live domain controller. If we have a look at this, you can see, for example, it's called small local, small forest. Um, under corp, I've got lots of setups, which include all my demo users, um, there's service accounts, there's service in there as well. So I've also created another domain controller. So if we have a look in here, you'll see that there's two. There's this one, which is DC1, and we've also created test DC2. So let's switch across to that one. We'll have a quick look at that. There we go. We're now on the other domain controller. So I'm not going to go through the process of actually creating a domain controller. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. But let's have a look at the settings here. So what you'll see under the sites and services is I have another site. So my main data center site has my live domain controller in it. I've created another test site which has my test DC2 in there. So what you need to do is set up your domain controller, make sure it's fully replicated. Um, there are various tools around for, for doing that sort of thing. Um, make sure it's fully replicated and what we're going to do now is completely isolate it from the network. Uh, we're then going to seize all the FSMO roles on our new domain controller and we're also going to clean up the domain, uh, our live domain and remove this domain controller manually. So what you'll end up with is a completely duplicated domain controller containing everything, all the objects, all the service accounts and absolutely everything including the schema updates for example. Uh, from your existing source domain. So let's have a look at uh, how we go about doing that. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually shut down um, my domain controller that is going to be isolated from the network. And then I'm going to bring it up in an environment where it has no communication with any other server within our environment. That's very, very important. Once you do this process, you can't join this domain controller or have it communicating with your live network. So let's shut it down, let's uh, separate it from our main network and then come back and have a look at it. So here we have our completely isolated domain controller and just, I know I keep making that point but it's absolutely imperative that this domain controller, because we're going to make it as a demo system or a test system, it has to be absolutely isolated from your main network. Um, to give you an example, I can no longer talk to my ex existing uh, domain controller. Yeah, so I can't see my existing system. So what we're going to do is we're going to seize the FSMO roles from um, where they should have been housed and actually house them on this particular domain controller. The way we do it, it's very simple. There's a utility, ntdsutil, so enter that. We're going to administer the roles. We're going to look at connections and we're going to connect to our server. There we go. So we're going to connect to test DC2 small local. There we go. So quit out of that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to run through seizing each of those FSMO roles and placing it on this server. So we'll start with the PDC. There we go. Just type seize PDC. When we select it, we'll get a warning saying that we're about to do this, so say yes. Now for each of the seizures, it will actually try and do a safe or an orderly transfer to this server, but because it's isolated, it's going to fail, and what it will do is it will seize the role for itself. So let's wait for that to finish. Okay, that one's finished. You can see that it the orderly or the safe transfer failed. So next we're gonna do the naming master same process, type it in, you'll get a warning, so say yes, and we'll let that process run. Okay, so that's the naming master finished. Next we'll do the rid master, same process, seize rid master, say yes to the warning, and let it run.
Okay, so that role's finished. So what we're going to do now is seize the schema master. Ooh. There we go, same warning. We'll say yes and let it run. Done. We've got one more to do, which is the infrastructure master. Just a quick thing on the infrastructure master, by the way. If you've got a um, lot of objects in your domain, this this one can actually take a little while. Um, there's not that many in this demo, but uh, but there you go. Same warning. Say yes and let it run. So it's finished. Ironically, me saying it may take a little while took literally seconds on that. So once they're all done, you can quit out this utility. Um, and what we have now is a completely isolated copy of your Active Directory. So you can go in, you can look at all your users. You'll see, for example, now I've got all my demo users are still here. Um, all the roles are still here. Um, you'll find in the Operation Master, they're, they're all on this server now. So what you have is a, a completely isolated identity. So you can now go through and test things like schema updates or anything that you want to run. Um, and it should give you a decent test environment, so it's a good place to start anyway. So there's one final thing that we need to do, and that's clean up our old environment, or rather, rather not our old environment, but our live one, because we've implemented a domain controller, and then we've physically disconnected it. All the uh, domain controller objects, for example, will still be existing in our live domain. So the last piece of this puzzle is we need to go back and we need to clear up that domain controller and we need to manually remove it from from our live active directory so uh, let's switch back to our live system and what we'll do is we'll go through that cleanup process and I can show you what's involved so the final piece of this puzzle is to clear up our original or our live active directory because obviously what we've done is we've implemented a new domain controller but then physically removed it from the infrastructure. So there's going to be a lot of settings and features that are going to be left in our live environment that we need to clear up. So fortunately there are utilities to do it and it's not too difficult to do. So what we're going to do, the first cleanup piece is to fire up ntdsutil. We're going to do a metadata cleanup. There we go. We need to sort out which server we're connected to so select connections and we're going to connect to server dc1 small local that's our small forest uh, quit out of that so next we need to work out what we're going to work against so we're going to select our operation target so firstly let's work out what domain we're working on so we'll list domains if I could type that is there we go select list domains there we go so I've only got one domain in my demo environment which is num which is zero so we're going to select domain zero there we go so next we need to select a site so let's list our sites now the domain controller I want to remove was in my site number one which is my test site so we're going to select site one there we go so next we need to list the servers in that site and you can see that my test DC2 which is the server that I removed is listed so we're going to select that one select server 0 note that it's done by number not by name there we go so what we're going to do now is quit out of that and then we're going to remove the selected server We get a warning, it'll take a few minutes to do, but just say yes to that and off it goes. It's done. So once that's done, we can quit out of this. There we go. So it's a, some housekeeping that we need to do. If we check into our DNS, what you may still see in our domain is the A, are the A records for our old server. Okay, mine it's gone, so we're going to check under the AD pieces as well. Just make sure the references to our second server are now gone. There 
there we go you can see that they all are in my setup here so right so you can see there there's a reference to DC2 I'm going to get rid of that And there's another reference to DC2 so let's get rid of that as well so what we've managed to do is we've cleaned up our our AD schema and we've also cleaned up our um, references to DNS the final thing to check is just our AD sites and services there we go you'll see that the DC2 is still in there so what we're going to do is right click and we're just going to delete it And there we go it's gone you should now have a uh, fully working live active directory so what we've done is we've removed that extra server that we added great so what we've ended up with is a completely isolated demo environment that has a complete copy of our active directory so we can then go off and use that for schema update testings or, or, or anything that you want to use it for